Hello and welcome back to Man V Film. It is time for announcements already. And we have Indicator who are out first with their May announcements. Three titles, uh, one of which I am really curious about, which is going to be the first one we talk about. So let's just jump straight in to the releases this time around. And we have the Pemini organisation, a box set consisting of three movies of sorts. Now we have... Hunted from 72, which is 41 minutes. Uh, we have Assassin from 73, which is just over 80 minutes. And Moments, which is from 1974, which I am really struggling to find a runtime or any sort of major information about, uh, except what was on this page, um, which we'll get to as we go down, I suppose. Um, in the early 1970s, three ambitious friends, Peter Crane, Michael Sloan and Nigel Hodson, combined the first... Uh, two letters of each of their names to set up the Pimini Organisation, a young and vital independent British film company active between 72 and 74. Pimini produced one mid-length film, Haunted, a high suspense thriller starring Edward Woodward and June Ritchie. Uh, two feature films, Assassin, a grimly realistic spy film, uh, and uh, Moments, an enigmatic romantic mystery. Now, these lost works, made by one of the most vibrant independent production companies of the era, have been rescued from the archives to give their first ever home entertainment release in this deluxe, individually numbered limited edition Blu-ray set. Uh, newly produced extras, feature-length director, uh, director commentaries, cast and crew interviews and an 80-page booklet. Sounds wonderful, so we'll get the, the two Blu-ray special features 2K restorations of all three films, original mono audio, audio commentaries on Hunted, Assassin and Moments with director Peter Crane and film historian Sam Dunn uh, from 2022, interview with Peter Crane, uh, director of the movies, interview with Michael Sloan, writer, interview with Bruce Atkins, production designer in all three movies, interview with Pemini organisation co-founder Nigel Hodson, Interview with June Ritchie, star of Hunted. Interview with Martin Chilmaid, uh, assistant director of Assassin. Interview with Moments actor Valerie Minfee. These are all like, local, uh, newer things, uh, just filmed and stuff like that for this. It's insane. Uh, Moments in Cannes, Peter Carey recounts a memorable story from an exhibitor screening. Film historian Vic Pratt charts the history of the Pemini organisation. Ian Hendry, uh, biographer Gabriel Hirschman looks at the actor's role in Assassins. Uh, we got a deleted sex scenes from Moments in Search of Lebanon, 1970, a student film directed by Peter Crane and Nigel Hodgson. Original theatrical trailers, which I can't find a trailer anywhere uh, for these ones to get a look at them. Image galleries, uh, new improved English subtitles, an 80 page booklet, world premiere on Blu ray limited to 6,000 copies, and there is region free, which is all important. This sounds really unique, uh, really interesting. I don't know if the films are going to live up to my already lofty expectations, but this sounds like a wonderful release with a wealth of new extras. Um, unusual to find something that is so underrepresented on the internet, looking at Letterboxd, looking at IMDb, that these movies are something that aren't really seen too much, which only makes it more exciting that they've kind of saved this and are releasing it. And it's got a low number as well, 138 and 139, which is, is you know, they're on to high 200s and 300s now. Next up, we have Connecting Rooms, uh, written and directed by Franklin Gullings. And <clears throat> when enigmatic schoolmaster James Walraven uh, rents a small room adjacent to Wanda's, an aging cellist, he soon realises that the privacy he seeks is clearly unattainable. From there begins a parade of revolving doors through which the occupants of the seedy West London boarding house, a sleazy young musician, a snooping landlady, all seemingly stuck in purgatories of their own making, desperately attempt to find their place in a tainted society. Sounds interesting enough. Uh, one that uh, does have a lot of reviews, but the reviews aren't the most favourable I've ever read. There are some fans of it, but a lot of people say it's a little bit um, inconsistent with its story. 
and kind of weaves in out. But it sounds as if it's got that kind of feeling about it. People coming in and out of this boarding house and it being uh, more of a vignette style or, or going on these little trips with various people that come in. Uh, featuring a pair of screen legends and based on the stage play The Cellist by Marion Hart, Connecting Rooms is presented on Blu-ray for the first time in the UK with a wealth of extras including a rare recording of Betty Davis in conversation and two short films by the director Frank Lynn Gollins. So it's got a 4K restoration, the original mono audio, the John Player lecture with Bette Davis, archival interview with the iconic performer, Spotlight at the Fair, um, 1951 documentary short directed by Gollins, taking a look at the travelling fairs in the amusement park at Blackpool. Sounds interesting enough. The Way to Wimbledon, a documentary short directed by uh, Gollings and narrated by John Mills, focusing on the 50 weeks a year when Wimbledon isn't hosting the World Famous Tennis Championships. That sounds quite interesting. Uh, image gallery, new improved subtitles, uh, limited edition booklet. UK premiere, limited to 3,000 copies. It is Region B only, this title. One that I'm mildly curious about. <clears throat> Next up, we have Peter O'Toole. All hail Peter O'Toole. Uh, Murphy's War is a movie I've seen a long while ago. I am very interested to go back and revisit this one. Directed by Peter Yates as well, which, uh, wow. Um, yeah, I'm totally in for this one. Peter O'Toole gives one of his most spirited and memorable performances in Murphy's War, a blood and thunder adventure film directed with grit by Peter Yates. O'Toole is the titular Irish merchant seaman whose ship is attacked by a German U-boat on the Orinoco River in Venezuela during the dying days of World War II. The sole survivor, Murphy, is picked up by a French oil engineer and taken to a native village hospital where he is treated by the pacifist Quaker, Dr Hayden. During his Convalescence, Murphy plots a one-man war on the enemy U-boat that callously slaughtered his shipmates. Yes. Filmed on location and in famously uncompromising conditions, Murphy's War combines impressively staged action with harsh realism and good humour. Presented on Blu-ray for the first time with a wealth of new and archival extras, along with a booklet. So it's just an HD remaster. We get Michael Dealey in conversation from 2008 um, on stage at the BFI. We get an interview with editor and assistant director John Glenn, uh, newly filmed. Interview with Focus Puller, Robin Vigian, uh, that's new as well. Video appreciation by ac academic and film historian Sheldon Hall. Behind the camera, Douglas Slocum, archival documentary on the great cinematographer. Featuring interviews with Attenborough, Parker and Russell Wow, that's, uh, yep. Oh, this is one of my favourite extras. A Super 8 version, original cut-down home cinema presentation. These are fascinating. Usually taking a movie at whatever length, cutting it to somewhere between 17 and 20 minutes. It's just weird to see how they somehow keep the spirit of the movie but lose a bulk of the running time. Yeah, I, I love that as an extra. Yeah, we get the theatrical trailer, image gallery, promotional and public uh, publicity material, new and improved English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing, and a limited edition booklet. It's a world premiere on Blu-ray, limited to 3,000 copies, and again, it's region B. So that is the May announcements for Indicator. I am very interested in at least two of these titles, the Pimini Organisation and Murphy's War. I'm tempted to get connecting rooms because I can just get the bundle of uh, these films all together. Let's see, they're £62 all together with 10% off. Probably going to get it for just under £45, £55, <laughs> my math right, which, you know, I'm going to sit on it, think about it in a day, read the comments that come from you guys and decide whether I'm going for it or not. I am looking forward to a lot of the recent indicator movies that are coming out. Uh, the three that are coming out this month, or May, March, yep, uh, La Lorna, The Phantom of the Monastery, 
A Time for Dying by Boudicca and Mad Dog Morgan. You know, a lot of times uh, indicators have been releasing titles that haven't really enthused me, haven't made me excited to, to wait for their packages, but I've pre-ordered the, the March, I've pre-ordered the April bundle, and I am strongly leaning towards picking up the new one as well. I like what they're doing just now. I love the idea of the Pemini organisation. I would love to know what you think of this month's announcements for May. Are you picking them up? Are you just fancying one of the movies? Is it something you're going to wait and get later on down the line? Let me know in the comment box below uh, your thoughts on this. And as always, there is more content up in one of these corners, I can never tell on this, uh, where you can see more of my stuff. And if you click the like, like button, well, you know, good thing happens. I love it and it cheers me up and just makes my day better. And if you really want to support me, you can go to the membership program uh, or Patreon, where for as little as 99p a month, you can just make my day, my year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.